Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me and Divya. It is uh, an honor and a pleasure to give this presentation. So today I will talk um, about some of the projects that we have at uh, NASA Ames, and they are related to understanding and verifying neural networks. Uh, next slide, please. So, our, uh, as uh, Jim already talked about uh, very, uh, many aspects of artificial intelligence, um, our research focuses uh, particularly on artificial neural networks, which uh, you all know are computing systems inspired by the biological neural networks in animal brains. They consist of many neurons organized in layers. And uh, particularly for this talk, it is important to know that they can be active or not, and that the last layer typically contains decisions. And uh, our talk will focus particularly on uh, classification networks. And um, uh, these networks uh, often perform feature extraction and input transformations with the goal of learning to do tasks by considering labeled examples. They can represent highly complex nonlinear relationships. And uh, uh, for our talk, we will consider networks that rectified linear units or ReLU activations that will compare the output of a neuron with a threshold value and, uh, for example, zero and forward that value uh, moving forward. Uh, next slide, please. So, of course, uh, neural networks has, have found many, many applications. They can be used in pattern analysis, image classification, sentiment analysis, speech and audio recognition, but they can also be used in, in and they are increasingly used in um, uh, safety and uh, security critical domains, such as medical diagnosis or perception modules in self-driving cars. Uh, next slide. And with this increased use uh, come also many challenges. Uh, and I'm listing a few here. So uh, one is lack of explainability and Jim already talked about it. So. Basically, it is not well understood why a network gives a particular output, and if the reason it gives an output uh, is wrong, that, that might introduce vulnerabilities, bias, or simply wrong uh, results in the network. Um, then there is also a lack of robustness. So, for instance, small changes to an input lead to misclassifications. Uh, so, this has been observed that even for highly trained, highly accurate networks, this uh, happens. Um, now, our work at NASA Ames is concerned with uh, applying, trying to apply formal methods and rigorous testing techniques, but um, they are met with serious scalability challenges for neural networks because they are very large, they are highly interconnected structures, they often have huge input spaces, and these characteristics uh, make verification and thorough testing particularly hard. And I am adding another challenge, which is less studied, but was also focused on of our research, which is lack of intent. So, for instance, safety critical systems at NASA are um, these are developed in a top-down down manner, starting with rigorous requirements and then prototypes, and then there is um, uh, development and rigorous uh, traceability between all these artifacts. But neural networks perform particularly well in domains where we don't have high levels specification. So they learn from examples without knowing in the end what is uh, the logical requirement for recognizing, for example, street signs, as Jim said, or cats uh, versus dogs, and so on. Uh, next slide, please. So, um, at uh, NASA Ames, we have a project called Safe DNN, Safety of Deep Neural Networks, where we try to address this uh, 
uh, challenges and we explore techniques and tools to ensure that systems that use deep neural networks are safe, robust and interpretable. And we have several research direction, for example, we explore symbolic execution for DNN analysis. We explore parallel and compositional approaches to improve verification of neural networks. This is in collaboration with uh, Stanford University. And uh, we also um, have that performed uh, work on property inference and automated program repair, probabilistic reasoning for neural networks, and also um, uh, a most recent project which develops system level explanation using scenic. And the overall goal is to provide uh, strong guarantees with respect to safety and robustness of neural networks. Uh, in particular, at NASA, we are interested in using them uh, for autonomy. And we also want to obtain compact formal explanations of neural network behavior, and this will become cl clearer later in this presentation. And ultimately, we want to improve uh, testing, debugging, and maintenance for neural networks. And I provided here the link to our project. So, in um, thank you. Next uh, slide. So, in this part, for the rest of the presentation, we will focus on um, our projects that are related to explainability. So, um, uh, and in particular, we have a paper that will appear at CVPR, which is a computer vision uh, conference, which is on. Um, programmatic and semantic approach to explaining and debugging neural network based object detectors and um, this technique is uh, based partially on another technique that we developed which is about property inference for deep neural networks and Divya will explain the details of that technique so if you go to the next slide please uh, so, just to give a um, short summary of our latest result that will go to CVPR, and I think this is also, again, linking well with uh, Jim's presentation. So, um, in this work, we were interested in uh, analyzing a detection module that uh, is used, uh, for instance, in an autonomous car. And uh, this module takes in inputs, uh, uh, images of road images that contain uh, street signs, other cars, obstacles, um, and so on. And then it uh, puts, um, it outputs a bounded box around those obstacles. And those bounded boxes are used by the controller of the autonomous car to, uh, you know, avoid them, for instance. And then um, uh, the goal of our work was to try to, uh, the key idea of this work was to try to extract high level uh, explanations in, f in the form of rules that are understandable to humans uh, that explain the correct behavior and also the misbehavior of the detection module. And uh, of course, the application is that you want to understand when the detection module performs poorly, because otherwise it can lead to accidents and loss of life and uh, other catastrophic events. But also, you, we want to understand uh, the situation when where um, the detection module performs well to make sure that it uses the expected features in the image. So, for example, that the, its decisions are not because of the particular color of the sky, but indeed because it detected uh, and it correctly placed a bounded box around obstacles. And uh, in this work, we um, uh, used um, uh, Scenic, which is a prob probabilistic language to encode uh, distributions over scenes that describe images that are input to the detection module and then investigated different techniques to refine these uh, scenic programs in such a way that the probability of uh, correct detection or incorrect detection increases. So um, these refined programs then can be uh, analyzed by developers to uh, determine if um, the decisions are correct or uh, if they are incorrect to generate more inputs for retraining and so on. So now I let uh, Divya continue, please. Hello, 
everyone. Uh, I hope you can hear me. Yeah, we can hear you well. Okay. So, uh, hi, I'm Divya Gopinath. Uh, thank you, Karina, for that introduction into the work that we've been doing. Um, I will be giving more details into uh, a specific project that we've been working on, which is property uh, inference for deep neural networks. So the key idea of this work is given a trained DNN model, uh, we aim to infer properties of that model as rules of the form pre implies post, where uh, pre is a precondition characterizing inputs on which we expect the network to display similar behavior with respect to post, which is a desired output property, uh, such as having the same prediction for a classifier network. Um, the idea here is decomposition of a complex black box model into a set of rules aids in interpreting and understanding the model behavior better. So the properties that we extract are expressed as constraints in terms of the on off activation patterns of the neurons of the network. Um, for instance, for the rectified linear unit or the ReLU activation function. It is said to be on if uh, the output of the node is greater than zero and off if it is zero. Um, so the key insight we had is that for piecewise linear activation functions such as ReLU's, uh, they can be considered equivalent to conditional statements of traditional software programs. And uh, hence adopting a programmatic view of the DNN model, the logic of the network can be captured in the on-off activation patterns of the neurons. So uh, the properties that we extract can be proved to be valid on the network using a decision procedure, which we uh, tried to do so. And uh, if not, on complex models, if it's difficult to obtain proofs using existing decision procedures, uh, they can also be associated with a statistical me metric of confidence, such as the number of uh, inputs or the number of instances satisfying these properties. So we basically extract two types of properties. So one is an input property which base, which encodes predicates on the input space, which imply a certain output property. So here the precondition is a conjunction of constraints on all neurons starting from the first hidden layer until a certain intermediate layer or until the last layer. For instance, I uh, shown an example here of an input property uh, which states that for neurons in the second layer, if the neuron N20 is on and N21 is off and N22 is on and uh, the neurons in the third layer N30 is on and N31 is off, then uh, the network always predicts a label zero, that is the output variable Y0 is always greater than Y1. So this is an example of an input property that uh, we can extract from a model. And such input properties uh, trace convex regions of consistent labeling in the input space or represent inputs that are close to each other in the input space and on which the network can be proved to behave similarly. The other type of properties we extract are called layer properties, which group inputs based on some common characteristics at an intermediate layer. Um, so basically, these are conjunction of on-off constraints on some or all of the neurons at an intermediate layer. As an example shown here, these could be constraints on just the neurons of the third layer, uh, which imply that if uh, N30 is off and N31 is on, then the output of the network is always going to be labeled one. So the intent here is to capture properties based on semantic features that the network might have learned. So uh, these are inputs which are not close to each other in the input space or don't uh, look uh, very much like each other but they share a common feature which the network might have learned and uses to uh, classify them. So we've employed uh, these network properties that we extract to provide robustness guarantees, generate adversarial examples for proof decomposition, distillation, so on. But the focus of uh, this particular talk is going to be how can we use these properties for explainability? So to start with the properties that we extract extract when expressed in terms of the input variables themselves serve to explain the network's decision in terms of the characteristics of the input and so they act as formal explanations however for perception networks 
where the input variables are large and are typically raw pixels of an image, we try to make the explanations more understandable by applying visualization or attribution techniques along with these properties to determine, say, important features of the input images uh, that might impact the network's decisions. For controller networks, on the other hand, where the input variables have more semantic meaning, such as they could be inputs uh, to the controller algorithm, the properties expressed in terms of the input variables directly act as specifications of the functionality or assume guarantee type contracts for the model behavior. So here we present uh, an example case study that we performed on the MNIST dataset, which is a benchmark for image classification <laughs> networks. Uh, we used a model and extracted a number of input properties and layer properties on it. Um, for every input property, we were able to actually precisely compute boxes in the input space or ranges of pixel values for which the network could be proved to give a certain classification. For example, I present here a visualization of images drawn from such boxes for input properties. So um, from this visualization, we were able to infer that uh, the network gives the same decision to digits whose basic shape might be the same, despite the presence of some noise. Um, on the other hand, with the help of layer properties, we were able to identify more semantic features. For instance, uh, looking at images from the train set that satisfy the same layer properties, uh, we were able to infer certain uh, features. For instance, if we look at the group of fours um, which satisfy the same layer property, they might look different from each other um, as input images, but they all seem to have a certain common feature of the center line extending above the top of the digit or all of them having a tilt towards the right. Similarly, for the group of zeros at the bottom, they all seem to share a common feature of a thick boundary. So by visually looking at these images, uh, we were able to infer that these are probably features that the network has learned. And uh, the benefit of this is that this could probably help us assess the generalizability of the model to new inputs, which may not have been part of the train set. Also, this could help in debugging for instance, if these were groups of images that were misclassified by the model, then identification of such a common semantic feature could actually point to the reason uh, why these images were misclassified. We also performed a case study on a, uh, a typical face recognition uh, application uh, on this data set called the Labeled Faces in the Wild, which is again like a benchmark uh, data set for evaluating uh, face recognition networks. And uh, we used a model which was trained using the faces of famous US presidents. And uh, here, when we looked at uh, images of uh, Powell, who, uh, which were satisfying the same layer property, uh, we were able to find that the nose uh, of all these images seems to have been the uh, deciding factor in uh, giving him, I mean, uh, in assigning these images as being as belonging to Powell. Similarly, we uh, found that nose seems to be the uh, most important feature on Bush's face as well, um, which was determinant in classifying the image as being Bush. So. Uh, what we speculate is identification of such a feature could also help us um, recognize or identify vulnerability in the network. For instance, one could imagine that uh, just tampering the nose in an input image could change the classification that is uh, or the identification that was provided by the network. Moving on to a controller network, uh, we performed a case study on the ACAS XU uh, application. ACAS XU um, is, uh, has a DNN model acting as a controller for unmanned uh, aircrafts. Here it takes in inputs, which are uh, sensory inputs, such as the range between the own ship and the intruder, the heading angle of the own ship and the intruder, so on, and provides horizontal movement advisories, such as clear of conflict, strong left, weak left, so on, in order to avoid a collision between the own ship and the intruder. Here, the properties that we extracted 
um, acted as uh, specifications of functionality for the model behavior. And uh, here are examples of some of the properties that we extracted for clear of conflict, strong, uh, strong left, and uh, again, clear of conflict. And these were specifications which we actually passed on to the domain experts. Um, they validated that these were novel um, specifications which were not provided up front. And they also validated that these were supposed to hold true on the uh, network model. But one could imagine that this could also help us identify behaviors which are unexpected of the model and it could be used for improving the controller's uh, performance or for debugging it. So this was a um, uh, gist of uh, the work that we did uh, in property inference from deep neural networks. Thank you so much for this opportunity.